Okay, so you may have seen the title, I'm making a pull out workbench here. And I'm just trying to work out what sort of gap I need down at the side. I wanna make a workbench so I can walk all the way around it. And also I wanna be able to fit it underneath that cabinet there. I'm chopping both ends off that work surface because it was standing out in the rain for a bit. So the ends are a bit, well, they're, not, they're a bit tatty. I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking I've got a 900 mil section, which fits into that cabinet. And then I'm going to make an extra section that fits on there that's 500 mil. In fact, no, 600 mil. That gives me enough room. There's enough material on that work surface to get 600 mil plus 900 mil. So 1500 mil total. Using my cheapo Wix circular saw. I've just put a new blade in actually, an Urbauer. And I've just put new batteries in, so I should have a laser. work out shall I make a hinge or shall I make a uh, the second section to slide in let me show you what I mean so here's the two pieces 900 600 and then I was thinking putting a strut along there strut along there hinging it somewhere here so it folds in on itself so I can fold it away but it's gonna be fairly weighty and then the other option is instead of hinging it I was putting a bolt through sliding this CLS timber inside a section so it can just sort of wedge in and then put the legs here. Or if I hinge it, I could have the legs at the end. Mm, don't know. I suppose if I make a hinge with a bolt, a pivot point, I can take the bolts out if I need to, if it is too heavy. Yeah, decisions, decisions. I'm just trying to work out a pivot point to make it hinged. So I think I want to make that a radius. Center point there. See if that works. Gap at the end so I can use clamps around the outside when I'm using the workbench. And then I've turned it the other way. It goes right to the end. Do I want it right at the end? I think I want to come back a bit. Because the outer, this one here, We'll sit like that. I'm gonna make some sort of fixing device to fix it to the fixed bench, but then I might wanna put support that way. So that needs to fold into there. So I need a clearance from there. Right, okay. I think I've got a plan. <laughs> make your place as you go along. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a while, but when you do a few drawings and you put a few sketches down, when you're actually doing it and physically touching it, it's more tactile and you get a better feel for what you wanna do. So. Well, I'm not a professional. This is just in my shed, so let's give it a whirl. Okay, so these are 900 long. That's gonna sit there. It's gonna sit about there. One there, that one there. Get there fixed to that. That's fixed to that. Bolt, bolt, hinge.
This is why I'm making this bench, to make life a little bit easier for me, so I can get around it. Sorry for the interruption. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you look on my channel, I've got similar videos to this and how I built my workshop and man cave. <laughs>it's 960 mil my workbench i want to make this bench 960 mil but this is slightly shorter this bench here make out there and it's on a slope so i'm going to work out the height of that take off thickness of the countertop and then work out the height of the legs but these legs are going to be removable and i'm going to think of a way of making them adjustable as well because the floor isn't exactly level and the plan is to move this portable workbench from here all the way down if i need to and the floor sort of wavers a little bit so i'm going to make some adjustable legs don't know how yet but i'll think of something
it all down. <laughs> So I've just worked out the drop on this work surface, about five mil. So I've put one L bracket here, and then I'll put the other L bracket that side, except I'll drop it by five mil, and then that should make this worktop level. Right, those legs, I've uh, reduced the height of them by around 20 mil. I'm gonna make an adjustable uh, leg on there. So I've got an idea where I'm gonna use a bolt inside. Um, but I've got that work surface flush with the other work surface behind. And I'm using these L brackets for now. And when I want to use it, I'm just going to put one screw in there, one screw in there. It'll hold. And then what I want to make is some sort of bracket that I can slide in. I've got an idea for it, but for the time being, I'm just going to use this system. <laughs> hey, that is surprisingly strong. I mean, that is not moving i was going to make a diagonal strut that holds that folds out for these legs i don't know if i'll bother they've jammed in there well enough but that is absolutely rock and then every time i want to take it off just undo those two screws there and then uh, away so right now i've got to do is work out how to do this adjustable leg system Arrowdite in first, not that one in with the two nuts like that on this coach bolt. Spaced apart so it gives it a bit of stability. So let's knock this one in. Let's see if it works. into the hole so there's the hole for the bolt goes straight down about probably about here and then there's a wider hole to hold the nuts slightly narrower than the nuts hopefully the arrow dart will set now do I leave the coach bolts in for it to set or do I take them out decisions I want to make some like little pads for these feet as well so they sit on the floor I think I'm going to get the adjustability so Depending on where I put it on the floor, I've got the height difference between the two. So while they're set in, I'll make some little feet for these coach bowls. Right, is this gonna work? Helping hands, these little crocodile clips. A slight gap underneath. I need to slide something under first, I think. So they're set perfectly vertical. I just found an old lid. I think I'll cut this out.
not too bad. Let's get this workbench tidied up. <laughs> do your workbenches look like this after a project? If you do, stick a comment below. And as if by magic, all cleared. Right, let's get on with this foldable bench. Now these here, not massively happy with them, but I will use them the time being, see how they go. And then I might extend the bottom with some more glue, but at least it gives it some sort of padding against this floor, it doesn't scratch it. Okay, right, let's start assembly. So inside there, you can see it, is where the arrow die has glued the nuts with two. Space probably about a centimetre apart, so it gives you a little, little bit more support. You see here, I've just cut away a little bit of the glue to leave enough room for a spanner. Yeah, it's becoming a lot more free now. it in the right position so I'll we'll have to use a mallet every time when I put it up at least I know it's a snug fit so every time I use this bench I'm gonna need my mallet a impact driver and a couple of screws flip him over I'm glad I put these coach bolts in just an extra hole because it well, it dropped to my toe. <laughs> just to tie another hole just for a coach bolt, just to slot it in so it doesn't fold in on itself. Feels sticky. The feet feel sticky with that glue on there anyway. Good. Okay, so I've just marked a few marks where the centre hole is. I know that side, so when I buff up against it, I know where I'm lining up to. Are we level? Ooh, just slightly out. I just need to bring them legs up slightly. Made a bit of a mistake there. I was belt sanding. <laughs> I caught the bench, but this is going to get battered. because I'm going to use it for everything. Assembly, painting, whatever. This is going to be my little workhorse. So I can keep all my tools that side, and then whatever I'm building can stay on here. And as you can see here, the legs. Now what I can do to adjust them, I think what I might do as well, put a spirit level on each side, a thick spirit level on each side of this workbench. So yeah, I can adjust that as need be. Adjust this anti-clockwise. There you are, the biting point there. Ooh, a little, little bit more. Almost there. There we go, Oh, still a little bit. That one's solid. There we go, solid. So I'll disassemble it now, see if it fits in there, because I've just thought I've added those extra brackets on, so it might not go in the door, but if I did it diagonal, it might. But anyway, let's have a look at that. Now what I probably need to do is put another hole through to lock it in that position. Right, two pins in there. It's in! Ah. Oh, 
Shut the doors. And you never knew it was there. Two doors open. Legs out first. Likes. And that goes. Flip it over. Find the location. And we're in. So I'm calling an ambulance if something goes wrong. <laughs> I'm certainly not bouncing up and down on it. So there we go, all complete. As you can see, I've painted the framework and the legs. It does exactly what I want it to do. Fold it away when I'm not using it. And when I'm assembling a project or painting, it's here. And it, it takes about a minute, minute and a half to get it out and, and set it up. Future plans, put a rail down that side there with a little L bracket to clip into at various stations but a video to come on that. The pins as well, the ones that I use to lock it in place now and to lock it when it's folded, I'll probably put them on a chain so I can move it from one hole to the next. This side's got a nice finish on it because it's obviously a kitchen worktop, countertop, but I may put a trim on that side and that side and also along here. Again, I'll do that at a later stage. I haven't weighed it, but it's just enough for me to manage to be able to slide it in there, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And just so you know, where I positioned the pin to hinge it, is 150 mil back. The difference from this one to that one is 300 mil, so 900 and 600, so I've halved it. Basically that means that this, when it folds in, meets the end of this surface, so it's maximizing the space. Plus that 150 mil gives it that extra bit of support. Well, it took my weight anyway. <laughs> the adjustable feet that I made with a hot glue gun seems to have worked good. Um, I may pack it out a little bit more with some more glue, but it's quite tacky, so when it's, in position it doesn't it's tacky to the floor so it doesn't move so i'm pleased with that the, the bolt went up all the way through and then there's like a shoulder where the nuts sit in so that i knocked that in and then harold dieted it and uh yeah seems strong enough for me i might use that system again on some other projects i've got lined up very cheap to make i got the work surface aid for free the cls i use which is around 63 mil by 37 35 mil um, I got that relatively cheap. I managed to pick it up as old stock from a local DIY store. And the coach bolts and the L brackets and a few screws probably came to, I don't know, three or four quid, something like that. So I hope you enjoyed this quite long video. If you got something out of it, that's great. I'm not an expert, I just do this for fun. This is my hobby. So thanks very much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. If you're new here, subscribe, got more videos to come. And have a check on my channel. I've got some other videos on there you might like. Take care. Cheers.